Hey, it's Beth here. It's um, episode 183, January 17th, 2020. And Boris is sick again. I don't know how bad it is, but he's doing that. Remember, he was in the hospital and he came home for Christmas and he, he's got something in his stomach and it blocks his bowels or whatever. He looks like that again. His tail's between his legs. And I think it's my fault because yesterday I was in a bad mood. And the other time he got sick, I was in a bad mood. And of course, because I'm a woman, I think I'm responsible. I was in therapy one time and my therapist said, you're a narcissist. If if narcissists think they are responsible for every bad thing that ever happens, that's the kind of narcissist you are. But I can't find it in any manual. But Beth, you didn't do everything. You're not the reason the bees are dying. I'm like, oh, maybe not. But I was in a bad mood yesterday. Boris got sick. Last time he got sick, I was in a bad mood. So I've been looking into coincidences because I don't know what else to do. I mean, he's got his tail between his legs. He's out on a walk now. I hope he turns out great. I'm going to take him in the car. I want to, I want to, you know, I want his bowels to be in an uproar because that's what has to happen. He's got to get so excited that whatever's bothering him in his body, he pu- he gets rid of it. He was in the, he was in the hospital for seven days. They tried to, they kind of put a bandaid on it. He's too old for surgery. He's just got to blow this one out himself. So just think about my dog. Anyway, so I was thinking about a coincidence because that was a coincidence. I knew in the middle of the night, I'm in a bad mood. Last time I was in a bad mood, I upset my dog. And maybe I, maybe I upset my dog again. So anyway, I was looking at coincidences and I found some good ones. Like, okay, Henry Ziegler. He, pretty innocent, well, not the worst guy in the world, but he broke off a relationship with a girl, and I don't know how harsh she was. He must have been awful. Like, okay, I hate him. Um, because she committed suicide. And it upset his spurned lover so much that the brother came and shot Henry and then shot himself. The person I really feel sorry for is the spurned lover's mother. Now she's lost two children. And Henry, that little whatever, survived. Just with a little grazing blow to the side of his head, okay? And the bullet went into a tree. Well, Henry, being the kind of guy he is, now that I hate him, I forgot to hate him, but now I do, he got tired of people coming to visit the tree and hear the saga and blah, blah, blah. So he tried to chop down the tree. He couldn't. He went to the hardware store and he told the guy, I think it's ironwood. I can't get through it. The hardware store guy, I don't know, being a militia man on the side, I suppose, had dynamite. And he said, Henry, you need dynamite. He, Henry said, this tree is like iron. So the guy said, take four sticks. So Henry did, and he lit the four sticks. And you're not going to believe this. This is the God's honest truth. It was in the Guinness Book of World Records. So how good is that? He blew up the tree, and the bullet that was in the tree hit him in his heart, and he died. I mean, I'm not feeling, I'm feeling a little bit nervous about Boris and coincidences, let me tell you. So poor Henry Ziegler, or he got what he deserved, I'm not sure. There are a lot of other stories. There's, you know, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, and they died on the same day in 1824, 50 years after they signed the Declaration of Independence. There's the 27 Club. Okay, this is even in our time. And being 27 when you're a musician does not work out for you. Brian Jones, you remember him. Jim Morrison, I loved him. Janis Joplin, I loved her. And then Kurt Cobain, Amy Winehouse, actually 40 
musicians in the 20th century have died at the age of 27. I'm just, I, I need to go somewhere where I feel better because of Boris. So Haley's comment, not making me feel much better. Okay. So, uh, you know, I'm not even going to go there because that's kind of sad. Okay. I'll go to JFK and Lincoln. They were elected a hundred years apart. They're both assassinated, which is horrible. Southerners succeed them, both born 100 years apart exactly. Kennedy had a secretary named Lincoln. Lincoln had a secretary named Kennedy. Kennedy was shot in Ford's Theater. Lincoln was shot in Ford's Theater. And Kennedy was shot in a Ford Lincoln, which is kind of silly. But another interesting thing is one year before Lincoln died, his son was rescued by John Wilk Booth's brother in a subway. And actually, that, that poor kid lived to, to see two more assassinations. And his last words were, don't invite me. No invitations, nothing engraved. Don't put my name on it. If you do... All help will break loose. It was, that was really his last words. So the only reason I'm thinking about this is because, of course, Boris, and I'm kind of shook up, and I really hope he's going to be okay because he has to be okay because he's the best dog in the world. But I just, I just was in passing reading this thing about this guy in Detroit in the 30s, and his name was Mr. Figlock. Mr. Figlock walked down the street one day, going home from work. A baby fell on his head. He and the baby survived. The next year, well, he was walking down the street every day. Next year, anniversary of that date, he's walking down the street. The same baby falls out the window and lands on his head again. I'm like, I don't often feel this way, but I think... Child Protective Services should have been called. This mother has a problem. I don't know if she's trying to get Mr. Figlock's attention and she thinks her child, saving your child, is going to help. I don't know what Mr. Figlock is doing. Why any man would go down that street again is beyond me. But he did. And after that, it never happened again. People were waiting. They were waiting on the corner the following year thinking Mr. Figlock's going to come down the street. But I'm thinking the baby is now three. And maybe he could just give that mother a little shove or whatever. But anyway, Mr. Figlock uh, was the reason I did my my coincidence. But I was thinking about coincidence yesterday. And I got in a bad mood. And then Boris got sick, and I don't know what's going to happen. I'm hoping he's okay. He ate some of his food. But you know how it is with your dogs. So this is my thing. So coincidences, um, you know, and I suppose there are happy coincidences of, I don't know, people finding each other or whatever. But I think this is my fault. And I'm not in a bad mood anymore. You know, and he's a great dog. So just Mr. Figlock, you know, Whatever, me, coincidences, we just got to, you know, say a little prayer for my little dog. He's a great guy. He's only 12. I know in dog years that means something, but it doesn't mean anything to me. So just just think about good coincidences. Like, I'm sure good things have happened. Good coincidences? Like, maybe I was in a bad mood and my dog got sick twice, but he, but he recovered. And maybe this time he'll recover without going into the hospital. I will let you know. But I'm just kind of like on the edge. I'm a dog person. I'm a cat person. Well, I'm not a cat person. I had one great cat. My cat when I was a child loved my cat. I just wasn't blessed with very many good cats. But I know it's just as big a relationship. But I've had great dogs. And this guy, he's he's just like the Felix Unger of dogs. 
he can't go into the hospital. He can't make it there. He's too neurotic. He needs to stay here. So just keep your fingers crossed for a little Boris, and I will get back to you. And stay sane. I know it's not easy. Just try to stay sane. We're all doing it. And the vaccines are coming. It's going to get better. But say a little prayer for Boris, okay? And I'll be back. Thanks. Bye-bye.